I hope you're not too tired <coughs> for this last uh, presentation. Uh, I'm very honored to speak uh, here on this conference and to speak about the situation uh, and prospects of liberty in the Western Balkans and especially in uh, Serbia. Uh, I will talk something about uh, our socialist legacy. Uh, it was uh, uh, today we, we have heard that uh, Eastern European countries had a uh, uh, peculiar uh, legacy of socialism, but it is not mentioned that um, uh, the, the, uh, there were a peculiar Yugoslav uh, experience of socialism, and I will uh, going to uh, talk here how this legacy has, uh, what is the impact of, of this legacy to the present conditions uh, in uh, Serbia. An important factor that still determines uh, Serbian politics and its transition is the peculiar kind of Yugoslav socialism and its legacy. Unlike rigid form of communism that ex existed in East European Soviet satellite states, Yugoslavia, especially after 1948 and the break with Stalinism developed it, its own moderate version of socialism. Unlike, unlike the other communist countries, Yugoslavia was relatively open to the West in terms of trading, taking loans and receiving all kinds of help and support and allowing its citizens to travel and to work in the Western European countries. Yugoslavia was, so to say, in between two worlds. This fact has a lasting influence on the present social political development in Western Balkans and in the whole, in the whole ex Yugoslav countries like uh, Croatia, Slovenia, Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Montenegro. Uh, and this influence is, of course, negative. It formed a special, to say it in a psychological manner, state of consciousness or mentality among ordinary people. This influence was and still is so strong that it managed to erase all memory of a different political order that existed before communist revolution, a memory of pre-war capitalist Serbia. In Serbia today, there is a widespread opinion that a relatively comfortable life and high standard of living in comparison to other communist countries, especially during the 1970s and 1980s, presents a strong evidence of successfulness of Yugoslav brand of socialism, a Yugoslav third way between Stalinist communism and an un uncontrolled capitalism of the West. People have short and selective memory they easily forget details, e.g. one small detail that Yugoslav miracle, allegedly miracle, was a result of enormous borrowing from the West <coughs> in the 1970s by the state. The borrowing that resulted in default of, of the Yugoslav state at the beginning of the 80s. This mindset, this mentality is the biggest obstacle to the prospect of liberty in the Western Balkans. This also explains why the Berlin Wall never fell in Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro. We did not have Stalin's Russia at the back of our, our necks like other East European countries. We had our own brand of socialism, homegrown socialism with a human face. It's... At the beginning? Mm -hmm. And this is where? So, so we have our own special kind of self, largely self inflicted socialism, socialism with a human, human face funded by a foreign debt. Uh, and we had our dictator who was admired both by communist East and capitalist West, Jos Joseph Broz Tito. Okay. We had beautiful social experiment 
that was financed by powerful Western countries and banks. In a way, the whole story, history of Yugoslav, Yugoslav soft socialism explained also the rise of ethnic conflicts, wars, and the authoritarian regime of Slobodan Milosevic, of whom you, you have probably heard. And everything, <laughs> yes. And all that produced a special kind of uh, Yugoslav anti-capitalist uh, mentality and in ex-Yugoslav region. And now we will see what, is, what uh, has democracy done in Serbia until now. The changes of the October 5th, 2000 marked a new era of Serbia and Balkans. People thought that democracy would uh, heal all the wounds made by devastating Milosevic-style authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. People thought that democracy was the only thing that can help Serbia become ordered, prosperous, and respectful of country. People thought that Securing political freedom will by itself bring about their goals. Majority of people did not know and still do not know that democracy by itself will only strengthen the socialist legacy of times past and in the long run make things much worse. It is true, Serbia is now a free country, but only in terms of political freedom, in terms of economic liberty and the value of private property as well as the role and scope of the state intervention, Serbia is a country of blossoming, blossoming socialism. Let me point out to a couple of facts to illustrate the negative impact of the realization of democracy in Serbia. The impact that has been so negative that in many areas, especially economics, the situation is even much more much worse now than it was under authoritarian, politically authoritarian regime of Slobodan Milosevic. Since year 2000, every new government doubled the number of employees in the state administration and state-owned companies. Of the total of 1.7 million employees in Serbia, around 700,000 are public sector employees, and this trend is still not over. It is almost 43% of the whole employees in the, in the Serbia. Uh, during Milosevic's era, practically no quasi-state agencies existed. Today, there are over 150 of them dealing with the all manner of things, from the regulation of sea traffic although Serbia has no sea at all, <laughs> to the attraction of foreign investment by bribing the foreign investor with Serbian taxpayers' money. Forty years since the fall of Serbian Berlin Wall, privatization is still far from completed, although the process was in initiated back in 2001. There are hundreds of public companies in which state holds majority or minority state. The policy of active state subsidies is the backbone of the Serbian economy. Unreformed state-run pensions, social, health, and education systems, practically there exists no real alternatives to the state schemes in, in any of these fields. Rule of law, and that is the same as in the Milosevic era, does not exist. In other words, democratic uh, politicians in Serbia from 2000 onward have put all their energies into making Serbia a welfare state dream come true. Their strategy can be nicely explained by quoting famous Ronald Reagan's words, if it moves, tax it. If it still moves, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. They were really eager to implement this one. Now at the brink of the bankruptcy, Serbian politicians, as their Greek, Spanish, probably Italian counterparts, have only one hope for survival, only one strategy, to get money from international financial institutions. Policy reform is directed to one objective, how to improve the condition of the country without making any serious reform. 
the main preoccupation of democratic politician in Serbia is to preserving social political status quo. In general, 14 years after the beginning of transition, democracy in Serbia succeeded in, in preserving socialist view of the economy with some minor reforms and concessions. Today in Serbia and also in other ex-Yugoslav states, we have preserved a mutated socialism with a sole political aim, EU membership. <coughs> Politicians are telling people that the only EU membership will resolve all our problems. Once it was democracy, now it is democracy accompanied with U EU agenda. And of course, when it comes to the causes of ill performed transition and poor state of affairs in every field of society, capitalism is to blame and neoliberalism. Although there were some individuals, especially certain intellectuals who during the 90s advocated ideas of value of classical liberalism, only after year 2000, after society was liberated from the clamps of political authoritarianism, it became possible to present classical liberalism as a legitimate and desirable political position and paradigm of life. But the problem was that the public in general was not informed about the essential components of this ideology. So before 2000, there were practically no liberalism or classical liberalism in organized way in Serbia. There were some people like uh, Dusan Miljevic in his global book which also published uh, with cooperation with the uh, Liberal Center Catalaxia Beyond Democracy in, in, in Serbia. And they published during the 19th uh, series of book of uh, classical liberal author, but that was all. And there were some few, few, uh, few uh, individuals, intellectuals, professors. But uh, all we had at that time, at the beginning of 2000, in the sphere of political ideas was the mantra of democracy, social justice, and all importance of state's redistributive role. Economy had to be democratically controlled in order to protect transition losers. And in the end, this strategy meant nothing but preservation of socio-political status quo of state-controlled economy, collectivism in various forms, and superficial reforms. In that atmosphere, our work with internet magazine Catalaxia began. Just students at that time, we told that the rich and intellectually superior tradition of classical liberalism has to become more prominent in the public sphere. In 2003, we started the internet magazine Catalaxia, a magazine for liberal in the uh, European sense of liberal, classical liberal Serbia, as a project which was to educate and advocate. Our aim was to promote and advocate individual rights property rights, free market, and rule of law. With that in mind, we translated a number of classical texts from various schools of libertarianism, from mainstream free market economy, even of Chicago and Virginia School of Economy, to the energy capitalism of Murray Rothbard and David Friedman. Our aim was to show that intellectual richness of classical liberalism in society where Marx, Karl Marx, Habermas, and Foucault were perceived as only true intellectuals and authors of merit. We become the only theory-oriented magazine in the whole region and that, that advocated libertarianism. And these are our activities as a mag magazine, as an organization, Liberal Center Catalaxia, and also as a m m uh, liberal magazine Catalaxia. Uh, we are involved in regional and worldwide networking. We made a documentary uh, movie, Capitalism, which was broadcast uh, even on the national TV. Uh, it, was, uh, it consisted of four episodes. We, partici we part take uh, active participation and organization in uh, uh, two uh, first uh, liberty camps and liberty seminars in Slovenia in 2008 and 2009. We made with our colleagues from Slovenia and Macedonia a classical liberal appeal to the politicians of Western Balkans named Bohin Declaration. You can go on this link and see it has also the uh, uh, English version. We were and we are still engaged in many publishing projects and one of the latest was the publication of the uh, already mentioned book uh, Beyond Democracy. Uh, 
Demokratija Miti Stvarnost in Serbian. There is also other organization, I will, this time I will just uh, point out to Libertarian Club or Libek, which uh, is very active these days in Serbia, especially uh, making a s uh, significant, pro significant progress um, uh, uh, in with uh, informing the uh, youth. And uh, we are also, as, uh, as uh, Catalaxia, we are also uh, the members of Fiscal Coalition, it aims at informing the public of necessity of law taxes and their regulations. Uh, we are now witnessing the birth of libertarian movement in Serbia, presently still proto-movement. Our libertarian scene is young and vibrant. Together with organizations such as Libek, we have achieved much in attrac attracting young people to the ideas of liberty, especially at the universities. The presence of Students for Liberty in our university deserve mention. Last month we had a Students for Liberty conference in Belgrade, largest in the whole region. Or in, uh, I, just, I heard the largest in the whole world. Our voice is much more present in Serbia media than it was in the past. One of our libertarian friends and colleagues is the advisor of the present Serbian mi Minister of Economy and the minister, the sole minister, is perceived by the public as a staunch free marketeer. Does this mean that the Serbia is going to the right direction, in the direction of liberty? Perhaps. There is an old saying, English saying, one swallow does not make a spring. We have our hopes in the, this aspect, but we would not be surprised if this hope turned out just another illusion. History of liberalism teaches us that. We are aware that this is just the beginning of our fight for liberty in Serbia. We hope that the next stage is the formation of the Libertarian Party of Serbia. But uh, it is very interesting, uh, and I heard today that there are many Libertarian parties in Europe, uh, but it is very hard to, to make one in Serbia because there is a uh, very interesting democratic uh, procedure that uh, needs uh, for making uh, any party. Uh, how to say, now uh, the main political actors, the mainstream uh, politicians in Serbia, political parties, has closed the circle. So nobody can enter uh, in that uh, democratic certain circle. That means that you have, if you want to, to, to make a political party, you have to have 10,000 signed and paid signatures, which is, which is a huge, uh, huge number, for, uh, for, uh, especially for the organization which is uh, fighting for, the, for, for these ideas. Anyway, we hope that the next stage is the formation of the Libertarian Party of Serbia. We are working on this agenda with all our libertarian friends and colleagues from other libertarian organizations. And I'm just now quickly showing you some... This is our website. It, it uh, existed uh, almost 10 years. This is the Balkan Declaration I mentioned you. Uh, this is the Serbian version of uh, Beyond <laughs> Democracy. These are our friends uh, um, from uh, Fiscal Coalition, uh, and uh, this is the one of the events that we that we were taking a part with other members of Fiscal Coalition on the streets of Belgrade, trying to to uh, push the politicians to lower lower taxes. And that is that is the whole whole thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander.